Taiga is the largest biome on Earth. Taiga doesn't have as many plants and animals as the other biomes. The Taiga biome seasons are winter and summer. All the other seasons are so short you barely know they exist. The black spruce. The black spruce can survive in the taiga because of its layered bark and waxy pine needles. And it can live in long, cold winters and poor soil. Some of the uses for the black spruce include wood for houses, Christmas trees, and antiscorbutic beverages. Siberian spruce is in the taiga biome. The Siberian spruce's adaptations are a cone shape for shedding snow in the winters. Also, a waxy coating that is waterproof. Most Siberian spruces are cut down by Russian industries for money and to build houses. The Siberian spruce doesn't eat any animals, but moose and birds eat their seeds and twigs. The rare plant of the taiga biome is the white poplar. The reason to that is it prefers to grow in moist places. Most companies use the white poplar for boxes and crates, Paper makers in North America and North Europe use the white poplar for paper, pulp, and excelsors because it's soft to write on but tough enough to stand water. Without the white poplar, most of the paper we write on would be gone. One of the largest predators in the taiga biome is the bobcat. Its food is mainly rabbits and small rodents like mice, squirrels, and rats. To help it stalk its prey and get all this food, it needs camouflage. And kind of like the snowshoe rabbit, it changes colors. In the winter, it's tawny gray, and in all other seasons, it's reddish brown. Unlike most of the animals in the taiga biome, the river otter can survive in a water habitat. The river otter has eyes at the top of its head so it can see when it's underwater. The river otter is an omnivore and its food consists of crustaceans, amphibians, and other small animals. The river otter has some predators like the red fox and the gray wolf. Plus, it's hunted by us for its fur. Red foxes are a very annoying animal to the farmers in the taiga biome. The reason to that is that the red fox is a very sly and intelligent animal. Also, it hunts at night, so then the farmers have a harder time catching them, stealing. The red fox eats farm animals like chickens and cats. Also, it hunts rabbits and hares. The snowshoe rabbit is a mammal that survives in the taiga biome. The snowshoe rabbit has many predators like the gray wolf, the bobcat, and the lynx. It can escape those predators with its big feet that help it get away fast, and it changes color with the seasons like white in the winter and brown in the summer and spring. Another animal that lives in the taiga biome is the Canadian lynx. The Canadian lynx helps keep some of the animal population down like the snowshoe rabbit and small deer. Canadian lynx are very sly like the red fox, but unlike the red fox, it has fur in between its toes to make it silent in the snow. The sun is very important to the taiga biome because without it, there wouldn't be any plants. Without plants, there would be no food for herbivores, and without herbivores, there would be no food for carnivores. Abiotic factors are things that are not and never will be alive. Biotic factors are things that are alive. Abiotic factors affect biotic factors in ways like the temperature because if there isn't the right temperature, then some trees can't survive. Another way is that if there is no air, then no one could be alive. Also, without soil, no plants would be alive. The link and the bobcat are at the bottom because they are carnivores, and they eat small mammals like the snowshoe rabbit and mice. The snowshoe rabbit gets its energy from the grass clover, and it might not seem that the grass clover eats the beetle, but actually, when the beetle dies, its body dissolves into the soil. Also, the grass clover in the tree buds gets its energy from the sun. One thing about taiga is that it can get really cold, sometimes even down to negative 54 degrees Celsius and negative 1 degrees Celsius in the winter. In the summer, it gets to negative 7 degrees Celsius and 21 degrees Celsius. Also in the summer, it's rainy and humid, which would make it cold and snowy in the winter. Symbiotic relationships are mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. An example for mutualism would be the black spruce because people cut down black spruces for needs that people have. So we get something out of it. Also, people plant a lot of black spruces so the black spruce gets 
something out of it too. An example of parasitism would be the Siberian spruce because a vine climbs up a Siberian spruce to get rain so the vine gets something out of it. But the Siberian spruce doesn't because they also take some of the rain the trees sucks up. An example of commensalism is the bald eagle because the bald eagle makes its nest in trees, so the eagle gets shelter, but the tree is not helped or harmed. Taiga is located over the top of Eurasia in North America, just below the tundra biome near the top of the world. The taiga biome, as you have learned, is very interesting with many interesting plants and animals. Hopefully you have learned about all the plants and animals and mostly the taiga biome. Thank you for listening.